I always bring it up when it's a Aloha Dance carry, but you know, Light Stealer, you have a bat already on your team. It's a it's a classic of his from Well, he hates S D and Void, you know, he yeah. likes to uh... You wanna talk about a hero that's gone out of fashion too. Life Stealer, I believe, has only been banned one time, never picked. And then yeah, he event. just really fell off. He didn't get touched at all in the latest patch, right? It's just He's just Wait. not cool, not not with this thing. Oh my god, why didn't I? In my head, I'm like, God, it'd be neat if they paired up like the the. This I was gonna say the Mason Weaver, you know, but Mason they actually Weaver. went with the Weaver. It's great. It could with be AA. an aggro lane now. Yeah, no, no, it could be an aggro. So lane. good with so. so good with AA. It's pretty good at uh, killing the IO. You go behind enemy lines, you find him. I mean, this try lane can kill an ogre, like, chilling touch, geminate. I definitely can. Many damage. Their level one is so good. But then you're but then, leaving, yeah, leaving again, the Void, void one v one against Bat? Well, not necessarily against Bat. I mean, most likely Most against likely it's Bat, yeah. Because uh, I don't think anybody but Yoku... Well, G maybe played Bat before, but Yoku, I think, is pretty much their only Bat player. Yeah, I don't well, know. G's definitely you have to get a mid laner that will force the Bat Rider to come mid. They can't tempt themselves to the matchup. But for friends, they still need to get... And that mid and their that hero, core. Their heroes are so squishy. Like Tiny or Zeus would be fun to kill, out the, uh... to kill all these heroes. Like any burst damage would be good. Like spell damage against SDA Weaver. Oh, I want to see the G Invoker. Nah, G Puck, let's go. Oh, G Silencer. Uh... If they had Puck, they would be able to start fights in so many different mm. ways. But then you'll be like a single core. Then you have a you have to pick. Aloha Dan's a very heavy hero, like a heavy carry hero. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Luna, without a Shadow Demon. What world are we living in? That's a little bit weird to me, actually. It's still, Cause... A good, He's still a good hero, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the hero's good, but it's... I don't think it's a good matchup it's against Weaver. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's... You know you're going to be... But no, think about it. You know you're going to be try v try. Right, and now you get the Lunar Blessing Aura for damage on yeah, all those to try but, and counteract the yeah. chilling Luna touch has, a little bit at least. Luna has crap range over his melee. Like, you still lose that lane really hard, I think. Yeah, I still would be concerned with the Like, they the kill you picture. way faster than you kill them, regardless of whether or not you have Blessing. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little nervous for big picture Luna, but we'll have to see. Obviously, friends have something in mind. Maybe to tie it together with their fifth pick or something. Uh, but we got to see Evil Geniuses ban out the Ember last. And uh, for friends, they got to get rid of what they anticipate may be the Sumo hero. This is, of course, if it's not the AA people. It could end up being something legit. Yeah. And they ban oh, they Invoker. ban Invoker themselves. Wow. Okay. That's really I was going to say, with the Luna pickup, the Invoker would have been better, I think, than the Puck. Let's go, Zeus. <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> that would be good, actually. Yeah, Vision for Bat Rider. He needs that. He can kill SD and A easily. Good versus the disrupt illusions. Go yeah. back to go back to Queen AOE burst. Hmm. Queen of Pain is such, so bad though. They need. I think they need more than one catch for the Weaver. I think Puck is Some really sort good. Of yeah, Puck would be really good. Nah, okay, they're great. gonna go Queen. A G Queen of Pain. It had been quite pass. a while. The hero has so many problems in the current meta, but it just it felt right for what their lineup was trying to do here. I mean, they have damage for sure. All right. To some mail. Do we get a a puck and get the dream fistful of tangos matchup? Queen versus puck, or maybe we could opt for something else. I kind of want to see some mail play Shadow Fiend again. Whoa! Wow, that's that's happening. Something. SD what is he mid? SD mid. Let's go. No way. Hey, hey, mid. You SD mid. Eddie, me. let's go. Uh, Samail is now a support mid player. This is EG's new meta. Let's go. Oh. Okay. Weaver mid, right? No, no it has nice to be stalker. A. Nice stalker mid. No, it's <laughs> Holy! All right, winner, give me your final thoughts here. Yeah, done. Bye. Yeah, friends is gonna win. Yeah. Yeah. I unfortunately I want to see this EG lineup succeed, but I have to agree. With that, we're gonna throw it over game two. EG fighting for their tournament lives of the solo mid A. Take it away, Cottle Guy and Draskal. I don't know, man. Is this like at this rate? And if it actually falls through as a Sumail. A how, mid lane is this is you, you how have to in the hell thoughts. like is EG like just, they really don't care or they really have something in mind like they're like we have a super secret strat or they're like this is how EG plays Dota now we put a support um, in the mid lane and farm up fast like I what? think now they just have a very easy scapegoat when they lose let's get in the game and watch some Dota <laughs> people.
And believe it or not, I don't know. I I'm s I don't understand how A is supposed to beat Queen mid. Like, how the hell does that hero beat Queen? If EG wins this in the next game, I am looking forward to the post game interview, and I hope, I hope they have some good questions prepared to be like, what, why, what, what is, why. I'm excited though. When I see this, it's like I want to see the best mid lane AA ever. Now we have not seen the heyday of AA mid lane since. That was Dendi who did it the most. The like original TI like. Yeah status way that was way, when there were only back. like 40 heroes in the freaking game yeah like you had to play a because there was no other hero <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> pretty much why we were mid uh, but uh, all right drastle let's let's get into it what will make aa a good mid laner in this game i mean you're obviously hitting a very fast level six the cold feet buff is nice because it means that you can more reliably get the stun off onto other heroes if the shadow demon happens to roam in the mid lane I, I i was giggling about it but the disruption cold feet combo is pretty damn swell it's an instant lock yeah so. you have to time it very well though because i think the yeah. cold feet only last three seconds now and disruption's two and a half so if you disrupt even a little bit late you're not going to get the stun this is eg it, it's true it's eg they should be getting the I timings mean, ppd's disruptions last game weren't that good but maybe he'll maybe he'll get him this time all right well this should be a doozy here will friends be able to pull out the upset and get a 2-0 against eg to move on into the next round and, and we'll, or will eg be able to at least bring this back to a game three this is lower bracket and a potential elimination match for EG if they do not pull out the win here. So, let's see. You get an early Ice Blast now. It's pretty damn effective. Uh, but do friends, like, even when he gets the early Ice Blast, so at that point, do you think EG, all of their other timings are going to work good enough around that they can, you know, move on the advancement? Because you look at friends, and I don't think they're going to be too threatening at that point. I'm just curious to see the timings for EG and, and what the what the goal is. I mean, I think they just want to play around Chrono and AA ult as soon as possible. That's like the biggest okay. power spike they can get because the heroes on the side of friends are relatively squishy. Like Queen, Io, Luna, uh, they're really easy to just blow up. So you know, you get that uh, you get that damage early. Is G dead? He's dead. Uh, he's dead. Was he only level one and didn't have the blink yet? He had shadow strike. Cooldown? Yeah, yeah, he, he had shadow, shadow strike level one. So they just swarm onto him and they take him down. First blood is going to go to EG. And uh, yeah, I think you make a great point because with him being in the mid lane does mean the Ice Blast could be synced very nicely with the Chrono as soon as it's up. And uh... I mean, to be honest, if you have Chilling Touch in this lane with the SD and the AA, you could probably win this against the Luna Io, assuming you don't like let them get every single rune. I mean, it's possible, but it's just a, a little bit of a wonky lane. You don't see it very much for just obvious reasons. So weird. Like yesterday, yeah. they go against Navi, they play their normal EG game, and today they're like, Let's just do it different. <laughs> totally I mean, different. This. Lower bracket too. But okay. uh, here we go. They have the uh, setup right there. There's the cold feet combo. Yep, they get oh, it. and they get it done. It's corny, but it does the job here. There's the support duo in the mid lane is looking to put in some work. They'll get the cleanup as well, as they also take down Lady Luna with some interference coming in from Zai right behind. And the landing phase so far seems to be, they need to adjust, I think, friends. I don't think they can leave the IO Luna here. Uh oh, and this is where uh, AA unfortunately is a bit of a downside. He's, he's being run, ran at. He can't run. <laughs> he has no escape mechanism at all except just dropping he ice vortexes to slow them down. He doesn't even have lakes. Can't. Yeah, can't he's run just away. a. It's ice. Just moving cold. I really feel like they should have just put G there from the get go. Uh, I mean, if they see the dual lane and you put G there, he's at the very least going to be able to get EXP. Yeah. Uh oh, Yoku, Yoku. top lane, in a bit of trouble. His fear hits him. Gemini not going to be enough. Oh, and Zai's been all over the place, trying to participate in every kill for EG. Yeah, he was moving even prior to the first night. But again, it, it's something that EG need to do. Their draft feels very similar and dynamic to game one. They kind of just need to do a lot of work in the early game. So they're prioritizing making those movements. And cold feet also really nice. You just casually throw on your opponent and they'll have to move. They can't really properly CS without accepting the fact that they could be uh, He's not even getting chilling. Solidified. He's, he's 2 one zero right now. It does cost a, a decent amount of mana if you want to try to keep keep it up at all times, I guess. But he, yeah. I don't know. They have clarities on EG. He might get it at four. Yeah, that would make sense. Because at least then you get like the the cold feet scaling and stun. Uh oh. There's no fear. Three on two. PVD steps in though. Gets off the disruption for Luna, and uh, we'll create enough space so that Sumail will be fine. And with three committed to friends lane here. Can't help but question how things are working out elsewhere. Fear is going to be able to easily bully back Yoku out of the lane, so I think yeah, but Yoku is winning there. his lane. He's 14 and 5 right now. He's got more CS than the Weaver. Oh, you're right. Well, looks like he's been able to get what he needs and just get out on the back end of it here. 
Yeah, he also got rotated on as well, so. It wasn't just Weaver pushing him back, it was Zai's movement as well. It's a very odd early game. Yeah. Zai's just walking from lane to lane. I mean, he's actually doing a lot because he's forced, what, two heroes <laughs> back, he killed one. I'm excited to see what he does when it's actually darkness. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't even get his passive <laughs> he's right now. He's doing so he much. Just... Watch it, and during dark is when he actually farms. Yeah. <laughs> get that bonus attack speed, dude. And now, speaking of which, it's nightfall time, so we'll see if this means that EG are going to be ramping up their aggression. I would I would assume so. I would assume so, too. As I start things off by planting a nice little deep ward here in the mid lane. PPD's here now. And uh, the three of them could consider getting some work in, but they got to know that Zai has been missing off the map, and it is nighttime, so something could be fishy here. They don't have the vision up though, so they are continuing to wait safely. I mean, safe Luna distance. night vision makes it really hard as well. That's true. <clears throat> he can see the support and uh, Sumail inching up a little bit, and they're kind of like, uh, maybe they want to go on Why us. Why are two supports creeping up so close? <laughs> yeah. Courier. Okay. G, holding, dancing with the courier. Oh, suddenly a wild void nuke pops out from Zai, and then Zai's dead. Very okay. good positioning there from No Fear. Yeah, he happened to be there with a good stun, locks him under the tower, and. Zai goes down, Zai's first dark gank is not successful. Maybe he's just a daywalker, you know? He's the yeah. Wesley Snipes of Night Stalkers. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Shout outs to the movie Blade. It was good. The first one was, second, third, I don't know. But I don't know who's is this can't help but feel like this is if EG are not as successful in the laning stage, it could be again possibly detrimental to their unorthodox, you know, lane setup. They do get a, a pretty decent power spike when AA and the Void hit six, though. Uh oh, whoa! Always want to fly, trying to make it back away, but the poison continues to tick. He's got the bottle, will charge up, and he'll be fine. Swinging a miss on EG in the mid lane. Yeah, they're they're just waiting on ulties, really. It's getting close. As you can see, Chrono was just used. But uh, when they compare that together with the Ice Blast, uh, there is some serious kill potential for them. But uh, as mentioned before, friends are able to also get a lot for themselves in this lane, and we could see a quick uh, Batrider buildup here for Yoku soon. Yeah, he's actually had a, a pretty decent laning phase. Okay, could be in some trouble here. Ooh, if they connect with these spirits onto Zai, he could be as good as dead. But it looks like he has a wand, we'll pop it. And things are going to be okay for now. But uh, as they do move on forward here, you look at Fear's farm, and it still trails behind the Batrider even now, while Luna sits atop of CS 35 to 8. Right now, is getting pressured back a bit, but she does not seem too deterred by this awkward AA matchup in the mid lane. And uh, she's getting very close to getting her own level 6. So Eclipse will be online for them soon, too. Yeah, it's kind of a scary thing, because uh, only a couple of the heroes on EG can really get away from that. It's like I'm surprised she's only level 5, but then again, remember, it's like they've been in a tri lane for pretty much yeah, <laughs> most yeah. of this early game, so of course her XP split's pretty bad. Yeah, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but again, it's it's EG are level dependent, you know? They don't necessarily need a lot of items to deal damage. Mm -hmm. Even Void hits fairly hard in the Night Stalker once Zai gets to like 5, 7. And then once they get the Chrono going, you can really start to look to deal damage, but... I'm sure they're hoping to get, at least get one, like, Chrono Ice Blast and, and Presence of Zai in this nighttime, but they only have about 45 seconds left if they want to do something Well, to it. be honest, like, the, the only person who really moves in the team is a Night Stalker, and he's, he's doing a good job of creating some havoc, at least giving EG's, like, middle lane and, and safe lane a little bit easier of a time, because they know it's any of those levels. Okay, they do the disruption, they put out the... Vortex here. Cold Feet is going to connect with Always Want to Fly. They're already tethered, so he can't make it away, and they will we'll be able to burst him down. This was two rotations in from EG, so they're hoping to follow it up with a bit more as Universe does look to stock out what's happening in the mid lane, but won't come across anything. Just just a Indian wisp takedown there. EG attack. had to rotate a couple of bodies over, though, for it. I think it's worth it. I mean, you're delaying the IO level 6. You're still having your early game plan, I think, go accordingly. Sure, you get a little bit out cs in the lanes. I think that's not too big of a deal if you're EG. It's going to be all about the mid-game fights and how much your wombo combos can actually do. Man, oh man. I don't know. I can't help but feel like I'm in the same mindset as I was in the last game. It's like, I'm excited. Mid lane AA. We got to see it, though. We got to see where it's going to step up. What's the value in putting him in the mid lane to begin with? All right, Arcane Rune. Blast, huh? Arcane Rune and Ice Blast, baby. Value Town. <laughs> Let's go. See some see some damage. And he's holding the glove. Could be just going for power treads or, you know, saving up for the Midas, I guess. 
but uh, we'll see. Wherever uh, Fear and company are going to be at. There's also pressure at the mid lane, though, coming in by friends. They want this tier one. And uh, they have Zai back, waiting behind. And uh, with the rotation coming in now, we'll have to see if it's going to be enough here. There's going to be the Chrono. Ice Blast is actually just short of that area. While back behind G unloads the Sonic Wave here. And they will be able to take down Sumail first. It's a one for one trade. And now Zai thinks he can muscle back Aloha Dance here. But G is going to be holding strong. Gets out the screen. Meanwhile, back up below, you can see PPD making chase for no fear. Universe is going to join in. Gets the tag off, and they're going to be able to take him down. Aloha Dance, though, pops out the Eclipse. Hopes to get a connection on for Zai. We'll get it there. Could have been the Lucent Beam that did it. But nonetheless, it is going to be friends who walk away with a couple of kills. But hey, EG also matched their number, taking down both supports. There's a bit of miscommunication there, because, like, Sumail threw the cold feed onto the Ogre. The Ogre gets frozen. He kind of misses Ice Blast. Like, he hit the debuff, but he didn't actually deal damage, and no one really went for the Ogre at the start. And then the Chrono hits on the other two heroes on friends, and it's just like, yeah, it was a little bit awkward. Maybe uh, next time, just let the, the Chrono go first, and then let the A blast fly. Yeah. Definitely felt like a little bit of a misfire there by EG, but uh, no team seems to be walking away with any sort of heavier advantage or disadvantage after it, so let's uh, chalk it up as a bit of a null in the meantime. But both of them have been slow, and who's that favor if it's, you know, as far as pushing for the objectives? Mm. Mm. Friends of four to take it a bit slower if a lot of their late game priority is all in this oh, Luna. God. Yoku. Uh oh, a lot of trouble. He's been saving up to try to get closer towards a blink dagger. That is going to bring him down a peg. So dead. Good uh, pick off there for EG to slow the roll of the Batrider. But I mean, that just goes to show their their potential. If they can all throw their spells on one hero, that, that hero is dead. Oh yeah. Like that, even with a Wisp save, if you get the damage out fast enough and you know, you're in shatter range, even a relocate might uh, might not do it. Hey, did he just get a haste? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Universe is Bop him. Bop him. Just keep bopping him. Go, go, go. Nah. He doesn't have Chrono and the A Blast is down. I would say if he had Radiance either that or A Blast, he would have dove there. Well, just smacks him back a few times, forces him in the bottom lane, and he'll wait 10 more seconds before that Chrono will be up so they can uh, make a go at any sort of new approach in that bottom lane. But Yoku needs to get back into the grind of farm so he can finish off his Blink Dagger and they can bank on the back of that initiation because, you know, I don't see any huge relocate plays coming in, so. Batrider's blink and lasso play might be the a huge peaking moment for friends. Yeah, I mean you can just reload on the lasso target every time. If you if you really want to just try to get control of the map really quickly, that's a nice way to do it. Though the worry is that EG react and the chronosphere is there and then you get blasted or something like that and you could have a, a really bad turnaround. But I'm kinda wondering how Universe is gonna itemize this game. Like he bought the headdress. I really feel like blink is a must have when you have so much emphasis on your chrono. So yeah. I'm not sure if he's going to finish that or if he's just going to go the casual headdress into the blink dagger. I'm not too sure, but you're right. There is a lot on okay, Universe he will finish to kind of do it. And that's for both sides. Like EG know that's a lot behind Universe to kind of set things up for the rest of their team, but I'm sure friends are aware of that. And that means that he will be their one of their big prime targets. Yeah. So I'm wondering if Universe is going to itemize in a way to prevent I mean, I'm not saying you have to go as far as like a Lincoln's or Lotus or anything, but he does need to make sure he, a Blink Dagger is a good way to, you know, make sure you can hop out from any trouble. Well, it's more about getting in, actually. Or getting in. Yeah, because, I mean, say you see a Relocate or whatever, uh, a Time Walk might not necessarily get you away from that. Blink Dagger will. Yeah. And then you can also Blink in on the Relocate and Sphere it. Yeah, very true. Okay, but it looks like friends could be making a move. Thought this might be a smoke, but it looks like they're just instead going to do it the old-fashioned way, gather up in the mid lane and try to press in towards this tier one and see if PPD is going to be enough to stop it. I'll try to lay things in with an early set of uh, poison waves here and pull the uh, aggro away from the tower. Fear, who has been very just at best on just farming this top lane on his Weaver, though. he's He recognizes that... Weaver has that bit of a buildup and needs a lot of nursing, so yeah, he's just focusing on that. Being no, like an insur good. insurance policy for EG. Because once he gets the Lincolns, it's extremely difficult for friends to reliably like gank him. And then he can become the one who splits up the map, and friends are always going to have to be like TPing around and preventing the Weaver from getting side objectives. And it can become a bit of a nuisance. I think that's why friends are kind of grouping up now. They have the Blink Dagger, obviously, on Yoku, so that's one thing that they can look to to help start the fight. But they need these engagements to actually go well for them. Otherwise, the Weaver will eventually become this, uh, he'll, he'll be a nuisance, to say the least. I mean, they have a lot of ways to pop the Lincolns, but yeah, it's still like one the bat would need He would need Blink Force in order to reliably disable the Lincolns and catch. It's just about getting into range to break the Lincolns and the other heroes is very difficult. 
Okay, Universe jumps, Chrono, it's gonna be for the Wisp here. Uh, Ice Blast will connect, and uh, that could be the end of the Wisp, but it looks like it will be here on the other side. Fears made his presence, Sonic Wave's gonna be the spot from G, a good connection on that one. One for one trade, and the follow-up as they take down PPD. Alasso's gonna be there. Fear, though, moves to the back lines, is gonna be able to get the cleanup kill, taking out uh, Aloha Dance, it makes it a one, or a two for two. But uh, no fear, big ogre. Oh, he right oh in the faces. My God, my no face, your two faces get bashed twice in a row. Unbelievable. One for each head. Yep. And uh, EG have just redeemed the fight there at the back end. Very nice by them. Yeah, Two but that, that just goes to show how difficult it is, like, five manning into EG. Just the AA blast and the spheres are such deterrence. And to be honest, the sphere only hit the IO. Like, I guess they were worried about the potential save, or maybe he thought there were more heroes on the high ground that he would have hit with that otherwise. Yeah. Imagine once he does get blink, it's going to be even harder for them to avoid those kind of chronos. So, friends, they need to play the vision game. They need to try to split up the map a bit, maybe catch a pick or two off of EG, maybe before the, the Weaver actually does find that Lincolns, because once that happens, man, it is going to be so hard to actually deal with those heroes. And we'll see what the next move is going to be for friends here. G is going to get harassed a little bit by Zai. Almost gets knocked by an Ice Blast too, but we'll be able uh, to avoid that one. And they're flirting around the Roche, but it looks like they're just kind of getting back to the Tier 1s here. SML's. He's got his Midas now. Or almost. Alright. G moves in. Poking here on PPD. And forces him back a bit, but, you know... He's doing a nice job in the meantime, not making this feel like it's a lineup with three supports. You know, Zai's been doing a lot of work and setup, but, you know, that is the big fear when you kind of look at their lineup overall, that if they don't get a lot going, then you have too much on the back of, like, fear alone, and then just three supports who can feel a bit helpless later into the game. Oh, lasso grab. Pull for Zai here by Yoku. Relocate in. It's a lot of hate for the Night Stalker here. Oh, fear. Who's right in the mix. Still hanging about, but... We also have action here in the bottom lane as EG rotate in on the back end of this tier one going down. They're going to be able to take down the Wisp. They're really good about that. They're always making sure that if the relocate back is somewhere accessible by EG, they'll be there to take care of the Wisp on his way back. Yeah, it's just good awareness, just being able to position that way. But I'm kind of wondering, like, friends have this Luna, right? But the Luna doesn't match up against really either of the cores of EG, like the, the Weaver or the Bat, that well because you can't utilize Eclipse against either of them unless they're disabled. Goku's in trouble, man. Oh my, okay. that was... Uh, whoops. Oh boy. Well, time lapse juked. No <laughs> one saw that. No one saw that. It's fine. Just walk it off, dude. Fear will. Yeah, but I, but that's that's a perfect example of what I'm saying, right? Is like, these heroes can't kill Weaver. Like, the, the queen needs Orchid if you're going to kill that that hero. And he was dual laned against. Like, he was 1v2. I don't actually agree with them putting the Luna in the IO mid at all in this game. Because I think it would be super easy for G to just, like, totally free farm mid. Or, I mean, at least put Queen plus one in middle lane instead. Because then you have a lane that actually wins. And then G gets off to the start that he needs to be able to get an Orchid at a timing that's good enough to actually have some impact. Yeah. I don't know. Something about... They really just didn't want, I guess, to put the Luna in the bottom lane and then risk having her in a bit of a bad time or risk... I mean, sure, have a great time or something. It's a little bit scary because you can get ran at, but I mean, he died anyways. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It seems weird. There's a blink dagger. It's a super fast blink after the Vlad's actually. I think it was like, what, four or five minutes? Not even. Yeah. And he got his blink dagger. I'm sure that mid, mid lane fight helps. Plus, EG have been doing very good on following up with tower takedowns too. So he's been swelling up quite a bit. While friends are looking for their own tower push here in the top lane, EG yet to be on the mark. Universe here now commits it, catches both with the Chrono. Ice Blast, is it coming? Yes, it is. It will connect. Boom! And that is going to be the end of the Wisp. And they're going to be looking to get a follow-up here for Aloha Dance. They seek him out. He's got the Swarm onto him. Universe got the blink, but they also have a Lasso, nice. and they quickly turn it back and around with a wonderful Eclipse and shoot down the Faceless Void. Fear tries to worm his way out. Sakuchi gets back and behind Aloha Dance here, tries to right-click him, but now he's the one that's getting rattled. They're going to bump him back with the Flame Break. Disruption's there by PPD to help him a bit. And now EG are looking to come in for round number two. And that is where friends are trying to get the hell out. But it looks like No Fear is going to be the one man left behind here. As they slow him down bit by bit with Poison. Fear, who's way deep right now. Oh, they got them trapped here. Yoku can't quite make it out. Looking to fly away. They're going to bring down the Wisp. Fear is still very low, but he continues to stay alive. 
friends make it back out to safety and Draskel, when the dust does settle, who does this really work out well for? I mean, EG, they started things off nicely, bursting down the wisp, but there was a good response play there with the Luna having the Eclipse and with the uh, Yoku lead in. Yeah, maybe slightly favoring friends. I mean, they, they did kill Universe, which I think is the higher priority kill, at least in this case. And... It would've been nice if they got him before he got his Blink Dagger though, but... Yeah, of yeah. course, but sometimes, you know, it's just about having the tools necessary to be able to take down those cores of EG. And with the Orchid picked up soon on G, at least they'll be able to go for the Void. There's gonna be a Lincoln's already done though on Fear, and that's that's a problem. Like, the Lincoln's is normally not supposed to be done until at least a little bit after the Orchid, because then you can get one or two kills on the Weaver. You delay his Lincoln's timing, and then all of a sudden you can pressure the map. But because it's done before that, now they actually have to commit like two or three heroes uh, like the bat and the queen for example or another person who can potentially break the lincoln's just to try to get that kill and if for whatever reason it's a bait you know universe chrono comes out and all of a sudden it's not looking so hot so i'm i'm a bit worried right now actually for friends i think that they're not really they're not accomplishing the things that they need to and maybe it was down a little bit to the laning phase and giving g such a hard matchup but we'll see if they can recover on the back of this luna they definitely have a lot of money here waiting for her as uh, she gets some bloodlust and over uh, overcharged loving and is able to kind of shred right through this ancient camp. Helps her get that much closer to finishing out what looks like her potential Manta and uh, onto whatever she needs next. So they'll be able to get that grab. And EG, well, they move into the pit. Feel like it's their time. They have plenty of potential with the Chrono online. Uh, they don't need to fear any sort of friends uh, interference. Oh, they're getting it for sure. They're, they're not going to even contest it. Yeah, friends already have their mind somewhere else. They're going to take their business top lane. I mean, splitting up the map is something that friends team doesn't even do that well. Like, they, they don't have heroes to clear the waves super fast. I mean, I guess Luna and Queen are okay. The Queen is really the only one who can be off on her own. And even that, a Blink Chrono and an AALT can just be death for him. I feel like they're kind of running out of ways to, to win, you know? Certainly seems to be the case here. And it's, you know, I mean, overall, I guess you could say it's kind of surprising. Mid lane AA, and you really only have Weaver as your true damage dealer, and it feels like you have this much of an advantage right now. It's pretty good, so we'll have to see. I mean, the other option that could have had during the early game was maybe having G rotate towards mid instead of, like, be there. You know, he gets, like, level 5 or something. Just TP, just blink forward and throw out spells. Like, they don't have any disables for you in the early game. If Zai's not there, you kill them. I'm not sure. I obviously, it's unorthodox, because you don't really see the AA Shadow Demon mid very often, but... Yeah. Sometimes you need to make plays in the early game if your lane's going badly. I mean, just look at what Yoku did the other day when he was just moving around the map when his lane was, was not very good. Okay, Aloha Dance. They get the relocate out, so... Yeah, they're going to lose the... Oh, wait, did they did they not see the relocate area? Okay, now they do. Now they do. Sai's going to be waiting, and we've seen this story a couple times before. Tries to go for a cheeky tether out, but get the hell over here. They bring the wisp down. His friends just kind of spreading the map here, preventing EG from really moving forward at all and trying to match up in the farm department and trying to find answers to the, all the questions that we've been posing as far as what they're going to be doing to stop this weaver on EG. Only to find their own way. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to become more difficult. But it doesn't feel like EG are really taking too much time to go too much on the offensive here. Like, the, a case is like this, you know, no fear. You know, a bit deep, maybe he's playing some wards or whatever. He actually ends up possibly living level two ice blast. Oh, nope. okay, it's gonna be good. Doesn't block the frostbite damage on the raindrop because it doesn't hit hard enough, so he just died. But, you know, it doesn't feel like EG are, are really, you know, putting the pedal to the metal as far as taking objectives, though. I think he actually could have killed him there. Uh, that would have been close. Do EG need to kind of hurry this game up, or do you think no. they're taking it out of a state where they could just no, go as relaxed and slow? I think they're fine. Okay, maybe they, Fear's not fine. They pop the Lincolns here, and that means that G can unleash the Orchid. That's going to be the Aegis. They got four surrounding the Weaver. EG don't have anyone close. But Fear says, I'm going south by. Yeah, they can't kill him two times. But that's what I was saying. Like, they need to commit the the Queen and the Bat to kill him. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have the damage otherwise. Or the, not the damage, but they don't have the lockdown otherwise. Because it, it gives you, like, this little window where you can react if you try to throw out a dagger and then Orchid, because the dagger has to hit first and it has a travel time. So you need something else that instantly pops the Lincolns in order to be able to, to get one of those disables on him. And BKB coming in here from Aloha Dance. It's a pretty good choice, obviously, against the AA. 
there's a uh, quite a bit of damage coming in from the night stalker void spam as well but i feel like it's still not an amazing bkb game because you have to deal with chrono as well demonic purge slows you soul catcher still goes through bkb it's a very hard game to itemize for the luna it, it's it's one of those games where you feel like you need so many items and that's how you know your draft is not in a good spot where you feel like oh if i just had like three more items that would be in great yeah shape, you shouldn't but... have to compensate so much with items yeah. with the draft you put together but it does feel like friends have a lot of holes in their game with the position they've, they've been put into that they do need those items to kind of fill the holes so you're definitely right on that um but you know maybe there's just the fear pun intended i guess uh with just having that solo core, core fear weaver, uh, if there happens to be that one misplay, I mean, I, I give fear a lot of credit. He's a great player. He's not one to make too many misplays, but if something is to happen and they happen to lose their one and only weaver, that is where Ichi could be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like, you know, friends, they understand very well how they can actually pick him off. And if they can make the correct rotations and kill him a few times, then yeah, they can they can change the dynamic of the game in their favor. Because once the Weaver starts getting scared, that's what you want. You want the Weaver to be scared, which is why we emphasize the importance of the Orchid. Oh, hard jump in by G. Just thinking he can make a quick solo pick for Stu Mail, but they turn it right back around with their own Chrono Ice Blast. He says, no thank you, sir. Well, how dare you come into my home? That was Thank you for the, the Agnum Scepter. The raindrop saved him, I think. It ate the Shadow Strike tick. I think it would have killed him, actually. That sucks. Oh, that's going to hit you hard in the morale department, that's for sure. Yeah, you don't want your queen dying like that. Oh, and it looks like Fear is going to also get a pick on the Wisp. Things go from good to great for EG right now. Disruption, Soul Catcher combo. As they make the run here for Yoku, totally just not even acknowledging no fear, realizing that he is not a problem whatsoever. And EG are just starting to take name after name after name. Yeah. This is just... It's such a weird game to watch. Because on paper, you see it and you're like, all right, the A is going to get ran at pretty much. But because they put him mid, and because they put the Shadow Demon with him, it wasn't really like the Ogre could make any rotation towards that lane. I mean, he still tried, right? Like, they tried to pressure the lane, but it just didn't really work out, I think, as much as they wanted it to. And in that time, like, the Weaver's totally free farming this whole game. Zai's just running around, throwing voids at people, killing G, forcing some heroes back to base. He just slowed the early game tempo of friends so much by his movement and in conjunction with the fact that they didn't really deal with the AA and the Shadow Demon lane too well. Yeah. That it just seems to be working now because everything is, you know, it's come online. And, and we also said it's not necessarily about their farm in the early game for EG. It's about the levels. And as soon as they got the levels they needed, they were taking fights. Yeah, it's definitely Radiant's all going great for the blue team attack. right now. But uh, for friends, they don't seem too deterred. Like they're definitely still making their moves into EG territory, looking for openings, but pushing the lanes a bit. They don't seem to be uh, in the mentality yet that they have to kind of play a game of possum at all. So God, universe is so farm too. Jesus. Yeah. Like the the off lane is as farmed as the safe lane queen. I mean, clearly it wasn't just a straight one v one. Then that's all fine and good, but. Having the defuse all up means that there's not going to be any Orchid use on pretty much anyone because you can just purge it. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden the game is just in a state where friends have to outplay. They have to continue to pressure, outplay, take the objectives away from EG, and somehow not get caught in a bad chrono. Okay, Yoku's thinking about making a move here. Is Zai the best target though? They're going to get the quick disruption on them. There's a Chrono catching a low on dance. That means the Ice Blast also going to connect. Marana relocate, pulled back out. They keep him alive for now, but the Ice Blast already connected. That's an Ags 1-2, and they'll be able to finish him off. It's actually Fear who's going to get the last click in. Universe just begins to right-click down this Wisp. He's going to be set to go down here. It looks like another big fight for EG on this one as friends frantically try to find their way out of the, well, the shitstorm. Yeah, it ain't working out so high right now for friends. It is, it is panic stations. He's I think he found a TP. Yoku, not so fortunate though. Just, just ba boom, just bashing, beating the shit out of him. Just give me your wallet. He did. Four go down, friends. EG lose nobody. That was just friends trying to casually make an approach down the top lane too. Okay, they're they're gonna ban Void next game, I think. Yeah, Void is definitely. I mean, that's look at that's this what game. makes this lineup work. Yeah. Is Void. I mean, it's not like oh my god, look out for the Sumail A mid lane. But, yeah. I mean, truthfully, Sumail's A blasts, for the most part, have been on point. Like, I think he missed, like, one or two, but those were in really hectic situations where even the most experienced A players can biff it, so I don't really blame him for that so much. It's more just how the lineup... Like, you want to buy BKB against their team, but if you buy BKB against their team, then 
you're not having enough influence with your other items, you know? It's like, okay, Orchid, BKB, Queen sounds great, except nobody on the team of EG does any magical damage except for the freaking AA. Yeah. So you're buying it for one hero. And it's not even as if he's playing it as a true core because Universe and Fear both are getting the majority of the farm. As soon as he gets the Agonim Scepter on the AA, his item progression is... That's all he needs. I mean, sure, a Hex would be nice, but he doesn't need anything else on top of it. Brian, should just, get, for us, okay. just get Glimmer Capes instead. That'll help you with the AA ult. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a really hard game to itemize for the cores of friends. It's something yeah. that you, you don't really talk about that much when you watch Dota games, is how, how difficult is it to itemize against the enemy team? And I think it's really hard to have a build that succeeds against what EG have drafted. Looks like EG are going to be content with possibly waiting out for the new Roche to come up before they make any sort of advancement, and then kind of goes along with the trend of this game. EG haven't really been uh, too keen on moving too far forward. They, all the Tier 2s are still standing on the side of friends here. EG have been playing a very uh, counter-fight kind of a game where they're, they're pretty much allowing friends for the most part to come their direction make their own approach and EG will either strike as they're coming in or take advantage of any mistakes that friends do happen to make in these fights. But uh, once again, friends are back across the river here on the side of EG. I suppose if, uh, see, I keep thinking maybe if they take it super late, they might be able to do something with like the bat getting like a refresher or something like that. But you're playing against a Night Stalker with an Ags now too, so you are you lose like one fight and then the, the control of the map that you have is going to be gone. Oh yeah. And when that control is gone, getting it back against that like no vision, it's it's completely... You, no one wants to be in that position. Yeah. You find yourself in that position where you're just stuck in base and making smoke plays or something to try to yeah. catch out EG. You just have no control of the game anymore. Oh man, small timer too. EG take oh, a big fight here. Boy. Oh they boy. They're going to get it done. They move in right from behind. They're going to be setting up the disruption while they just quickly take out the Wisp. Don't even try to save this Luna. Ice Blast, Chrono, everything to make sure she doesn't make it away. I mean, Ice Blast would have connected and it might have been good enough where she would not yeah. going to heal the fountain. But nonetheless, EG makes sure that she is down for good. And uh, with that, they could head their way back down through the map and, and head towards the Roche neighborhood if they'd like. Along the way, though, they happen to find a, a little G Queen of Pain and it forced her out. You know, there's one thing about this draft from EG that really makes me... It, like, makes me respect PPD as a drafter, is the recognition of that Void is so strong in a game where there's pretty much no saves. And of course, Cast Chris. Give PPD some credit, he's gonna die. Yeah, but it has to happen. Um, but that, that's just how it works. I just think that, you know, normally you would see Venge, or Shadow Demon, or Dazzle, or something else on the side of friends that would be some kind of rebuttal against the Void, but they just simply don't have it. No. And it's because the Shadow Demon and like these other heroes are so highly contested that you very rarely see like more than one of them on the same team. And no surprise to see that EG will be able to easily clean up this Roche. Oh, it'll be easy. Yoku's here. We know how good Batrider can be. Flame break. Man, had he gone in, who knows? But he actually decided not to pull the trigger on that one. I don't blame him. <laughs> this is a spooky game right now for friends. Maximum spook. And uh, once EG decide that they want to move forward that's when things can get scary because i feel like up to this point eg have been kind of taking it easy on following up these you know skirmishes with a big kill but all right they could take sumail <laughs> he's got a force though and he's dead all right they got him down it's not just any aa it's a pretty high value aa so that's pretty nice for friends but oh that's not the response uh, you want to see uh, oh we're being hacked um, and uh, the follow-up kill is the takedown of G. So where they got the Kasumail kill, that's nice, but losing your Queen of Pain after doesn't really make the case that much better. Yeah, so it's a it's a trade at the end of the day. And to be honest, the AA kill is much less valuable than the Queen, because unlike the the, AA, the Queen actually needs items. AA's already got pretty much everything that you could ever want oh, yeah. in this game. You're an A and you have an Ags, you're like, I'm good. I'm good from now on. I mean, the, the thing is, you know, we're talking a lot about EG, and sh they certainly have a lineup advantage at this stage, but... Friends are still farming on a lot of their cores. They're not really too far behind. I mean, the Luna's the highest net worth. It's more just about how the fights go on that that makes it difficult, right? Because you have to worry about the Chrono. They can pretty much exclusively Chrono Aloha Dance and be fine. Like, yeah. They don't ever have to Chrono anybody else. No. I mean, what is an Ogre going to do about it? They've been pretty good at tracking down the Wisp, so he can't even bail out the Luna. Yeah. And outside of that, it's like, yeah, nothing else seems It's more just like... 
EG's lineup is easier to execute right now than yeah. friends. That's that's what gives them the advantage because they're more prone to making mistakes in a lineup where you're constantly telling yourself, you know, we got to go, we got to push, we got to win the game. Otherwise, you know, this Weaver is just going to be unkillable. And, you know, fear is getting kind of to that point, right? It really is. Oh, Yoku trying to avoid the trouble here knows if he runs into those trees down below he's it's certain to get hit but there's really nowhere safe to hide from old man you could have tp though i think just nowhere safe face. just can't you're just scared what do you do draskal weaver's hunting you down you're shaking up you can't tp dude i don't know always want to fly okay he's back now and they're squaring up here against universe gets off the time dilation he's like good luck casting spells now okay but g shows up oh, and it's that a sidestep ankle breaker no uh, Sonic Wave for you. G goes back in regardless, commits out the screen. Good Ice Blast here, will connect. Universe is gonna be forced to time walk back it away. Okay. Luna dishes out the Eclipse here. Still no one from EG going down quite yet. A disruption stalls things out, but they are gonna get the Sumail AA down, but most of the damage has been on the side of friends. They quickly lose four. EG now make their way down this mid lane. Can we look at the Void really quick? Just for a second. Just look at him. He didn't even chrono that fight. That's, that's not great. That is not great. Losing the fight so hard when the number one threat on the enemy team is dumb. That is a super bad sign for friends. Well, um, I mean, G's doing the right thing here. He's trying to split up the map as best he can. Problem is, Chrono's going to be up. If he's not careful, he could just end up dying here too. Yeah. EG could make a use of this Chrono, take another team fight, and it actually could quickly be the game here. Yeah, friends are not careful. And uh, they'll go about that way. Universe out in front decides to pull off. We'll let Fear be the one to siege down the tower. Tier 3 is going to be dropped. And now we got to see what uh, friends want to do about it, if anything. G's going to be able to secure Tier 3 for himself here in the top lane. Oh, God. Oh, he doesn't Don't. know. Okay, yeah, it's nighttime. <clears throat> and a Bloodthorn. Now complete. Is this the item to get friends back? <laughs> Bloodthorn. Not really. I mean, it's a, it's just an orchid, but it's so expensive. It's an upgraded orchid. So yeah, you can burst somebody really hard if you get the, the debuff on them. That's fine. But it doesn't solve their problem. Oh, it's a Yules. I thought he was getting a Dagon. Uh -huh. Dude, Yules is so legit on AA. Yeah. You cold feet Yules, free stun. That's the dream. And obviously, it's for the dispel of the orchid, but still. Nah. Cold feet. More stuns. Honestly, I think Sumail could just sit in the base right now and just throw ults and he'd, he wouldn't, like, he'd be having as much influence as he needs to. An Aether Lens on the Night Stalker. Don't see that very often. Connects with the Silence, though, and the Void Nuke much further away. The Silence more so being uh, pretty damn important and nice. Yeah, the Silence range is also not that good. Cast the, uh, increases the range of Darkness, too. Yeah. Dark in other games. <laughs> Butterfly done though, and Fear doesn't have an MKB. Does that really matter nah, a whole lot? Nah, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> it just I'm reaching matter. here. I know, but the, the the thing that sucks is there's only one Chrono target, and when there, you have a team, it's like playing against Doom, right? You have one good core against Doom, and that core gets doomed, and then you're like, oh, we lost the fight. It's the same thing with Sphere. He doesn't have to hit multiple heroes. Yeah. Even if the IO saves him, the ice ice blast hits, he's out of the fight. Like he can't come back in. Yeah. So they have to, what, take fee take Universe. They need to the kill Universe. Right they need to kill Universe immediately. That's how they win. Right or away. they, ne they or need Universe to... needs to just miss. They can, if always want to fly is fast enough and he gets to relocate before the Ice Blast lands, maybe that's good enough. That's true. But even that is, is a really hard thing to yeah, do. They've always been like pretty much on top of each other, so I don't know how easy that's going to come. But yeah, if you're happy to take down Fear or uh, Universe and happen to avoid the trouble, then that's two big ultis that will not be available. I mean, truthfully, they're hanging on very well considering the circumstances. Like, they're, they're just always out on the map trying to do something. They're not just giving EG the breathing room. Yeah, I mean, they're farming. They're matching up in farm fine with EG. It's just yeah. EG have better chess pieces. They have you know, better items and a better game plan at the moment. I mean, friends are trying to play chess, and EG are just playing checkers and laughing at them. Okay, there goes the Chrono. It's actually going to be for no fear, just the Ogre. But there is a Aloha Dance back and behind. 
Universe looks to isolate him while G made his move inside. Him and Yoku oh looking God. to kind of find one target here, but it's not going to be easy. Disruption saves Zai and keeps him away from a lot of trouble. Now Aloha Dance charging on in the back of BKB Eclipse, but Radiant's it's going to be uh, used on a lot of creeps there on the back end. And now he has to quickly pull away. Not so good. EG take this fight too, and they rush on in to see if they can get any sort of uh, stragglers here. Radiant's the bug get that little wisp. They'll get him. Yeah, this, this game is super hard. They, they didn't even have to spear the Luna that time. They were just like, eh, we're just going to spear somebody. Anyone we catch is fine. And again, it, it just goes back to the Luna's inability to utilize her ultimate this game. Like, how can she eclipse and hit anything? Like, you're supposed to fight with this hero and... They might kill her with, without even having fear here. Okay, they had to relocate her. I'm not sure, honestly, what they what they can do. Does it feel like if we reflect back now into the big picture of this game that friends had a way to kind of get themselves in this game and then EG took over and there was no coming back? Did they no, miss, they definitely like, had they a miss way to their win. window? I think the biggest mistake is not giving G an easier lane. Okay. He needed a lane where he could get a faster Orchid. If he gets a faster Orchid, this game is totally different because then the Weaver and the Void can die. And when they can die and you have Batrider Blink at an early stage, then you open up so many more opportunities to kill. And just having that pressure out on the map is what they needed. The problem is, the Lincolns on Fear came out too quick. EG were getting more out of the early game than they should have. And by the time they're ahead, the catch-up Orchid is not a thing against Weaver with the Lincolns. It just doesn't work. Because the, the one time they killed him when he had Aegis, the Batrider and the Queen both had to be there. Yeah. And it's just like... You can't do that every time, because then you're sending all your cores to one spot on the map, and then you're always going to have somebody else farming another lane or pushing or whatever. It's it's just a, a game that had to be won in the laning phase, I think, for friends in order to succeed. Yeah, the only real chance of them winning from here on out feels like it's uh, got to be on EG to either flub it up, make a mistake, or friends to pull out one hell of a crazy YOLO play to catch EG off guard a bit. I mean, I wasn't a believer in the AA at first, but... It uh, it certainly has made it made me think about it at least. It's done its part, but did, did it do anything where you're like, yeah? But it, it needed to be in the mid lane. Oh, universe, catches up G with that Manta and all that damage, man. He is dead. Ah. Yeah, that's right. That's kind of what my brain did when I saw them pick AA and then put it on Sumail. Ah. What's happening? He's got Dagon now, though. He's that's true. Kills. I think the again though it's it's the A obviously worked out, but I think it's more about the void this game. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the Weaver core as well. Like those two are just it was so nice. obnoxious. It was nice having the ice blast a bit earlier than later, but yeah, I don't feel like that was the the reason EG got the win. But uh, you know, having Universe have a grand old time, having Fear have a grand old time in his laning stage and allowing to get that Lincoln's faster, certainly was a uh, big milestones for EG in this game. Yeah. Item timing is so important in Dota right now, yeah. especially on heroes that need to have like big impact like a queen or any natural orchid carrier like Storm or something like that. If you don't get your items at the right time, you kind of fall flat in your impact in the overall game. And then all of a sudden, you got this weaver running around and you're just like, God, how the hell do we kill this hero? And then there's another like void on the team with the blink dagger and a defusal and your orchid is like around at the same time he has all those items that that can't be the the, the proper item timing for this game has to be much faster yep. well more sweet and delicious items coming in for eg to make friends lives even worse this is such a cocky build too he's getting no defensive items at all he's not buying bkb he's not getting a heart he's just like i am so confident that i am not dying i'm just going damage 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 next up rapier yep. let's go they could probably just buy a butterfly, to be honest, and it wouldn't even matter. Look at these creeps get shredded, though. That Weaver hits hard. Luna, though, you know, friends are still in it, though. They wanna, they wanna get back. I mean, if they... grinding up the farm, she also. It's a Luna going for what apparently looks like an MKB. It's so or hard. a rapier, maybe. Who knows? You know, what do you, what do you think? Is it that far fetched? What, rapier, rapier is, it rapier, is it rapier luna is it are we at that her time? problem isn't her damage output her problem is the ability for her to hit heroes how does she click on somebody in this fight You're gonna, the void is going to sphere you the night stalker runs crazy fast the weaver is super elusive and has a lincoln's you need a target to be able to punch and that's why you have the bat right because he's supposed to be the one who pulls a target into you to punch but you can't do that 
if the bat rider can't jump anybody and that's what i feel like has been the consistent theme look at these glaives though okay the chrono is going to catch aloha dance here here comes aloha oh, okay. okay that's yeah. good that's okay good. oh i always mix up always when playing aloha dance but they have been a quite the pairing here they will get the save dpd is going to be the one to be last with them yoku pulls them all the way back but here begins to go to work on g g sidesteps pulls away and they can't really infiltrate here while fear does his business on the back end side and begins to clean up the rest of the pieces here three go down from friends as they begin to take down aloha dance they make it four fear beyond freaking godlike as he gets a triple cure triple cure triple cure triple, triple kill. kill here and now god this game yeah i'm i'm totally frazzled dota dota too that's basically what we witnessed here. I do think um, friends had the lineup that they, they could have won with it. It's just, it's it's one of those lineups that's so weird to play against that you're not exactly sure what the best thing to do is. And all they really needed was a faster orchid. That's it. I mean, it's, it's putting a lot of emphasis on one thing, but when you see the way the game played out and how impossible it is for them to kill fear, it's it's really the big factors. You need to be able to pick off heroes, and they call it GG, so we are going to a game three. GG! The second series straight will be going to another game three. Evil geniuses. What crazy support are they going to throw in the mid lane next? I mean, it worked out. It certainly worked out. Coddle mid next. Let's. I would it. say... Mm, maybe not any hero, but a lot of heroes probably could have done what the A did this game. Because it's just throwing a little bit of extra damage in the chrono, you know what I mean? It's it's the synergy with the Void that mattered the most. The Void and the Weaver combination was too much after the mid game for them to be able to kill either of them. They just had free reign, like one death on the Void, zero deaths on the Weaver. And that's the story right there. They, they just could not kill the course of EG. Yep, friends, they'll have to take this one on the chin, but they're not out yet. We have one more game, so what we're going to do now is cut to a break. When we come back, we'll have our panel discuss what exactly happened in game number two as we get hyped up and ready for game three of Evil Geniuses versus Friends.